Yeah, it's a great pleasure for me. I'm Gabriele Rippel, <laughs> University of Bern, Chair of Literatures in English, American Literature, to welcome Julius Grebe uh, from the University of Oldenburg in right. Germany, uh, where he is a lecturer and a research associate. And he just gave a very fascinating talk um, at the Frankfurt Conference, The Return of the Aesthetics, with the title Material Praxis and Pragmatic Aesthetics in uh, Pound and Olsen. And the talk was about um, how these two poets, mid-century, 20th century poets, modernists, very famous modernists, how they stage an identification of praxis and practice, how they saw the poetic act as a social, a social objective. Maybe you want to tell us a bit more, the listeners out there, a bit more about, uh, well, maybe the central uh, thesis of your talk. Well, the context of this talk was um, this conference of uh, the return to or of the aesthetic. And um, the dichotomy seems to be here, um, aesthetics as something that, that is imbricated um, in the social and then on the other, um, something what we could call an aesthetic autonomy or autonomy of the aesthetic. And um, with my dichotomy of um, literary practice on the one hand and social practice with an X on the other, um, I want to sort of uh, revisit that dichotomy that, that we find in the conference description. Um, and what we find in those two poets uh, not only in those two poets, but especially in those two poets who are really influential in uh, modernist American poetry, is a sort of dissolution of that cleavage between um, social praxis and literary practice. Um, and praxis has always been something that is socially invested and had to do with political statement, whereas um, something like an aesthetic play or literary practice from, from, from a more technical point of view um, would, would sometimes, or for some poets or artists, would have uh, the ideal of an aesthetic autonomy. And for those two poets, um, that autonomy um, is not only irrelevant, but, but is um, non-existent or um, impossible. Mm. Well, this is really interesting because, you know, I wouldn't bring together Pound's very, this modernist way of writing, kind of trying to be innovative, mm -hmm. disruptive, uh, difficult, difficult, difficult aesthetic, poetry, yeah, to kind sure. of bring that together right away with kind of uh, this idea to, uh, you know, that you're interested in making interventions, kind of social interventions. Mm -hmm. So that's a very interesting topic, I think. Now, what brought you to this new topic? Because you're a renowned scholar of contemporary American literature, uh, McCarthy, Cormac McCarthy. Uh, a book will come out about uh, McCarthy and nature. That's is true. about to come out. Yes. Is about to come out. So you also worked on Mark Danielewski. So right. why this new field? It's a new genre you're approaching, and uh, well, an other period. Another period, yes. Um, late 19th century until um, contemporary poetry, that's what I'm interested in uh, mm -hmm. right now. American uh, modern poetry, I use that um, not, not it's, it's a problematic maybe uh, umbrella term, but it's something that, that seems to synthesize most of the poets I'm interested in, um, late 19th century until the present. And I'm really interested in this because it seems that, it seems to be that um, uh, that prose literature or, or fiction um, has a slightly different literary history compared to um, modernist uh, poetics or, or um, a different history than, than um, poetic practice in general, uh, not only in America, not only in the US. And what brought me to um, this project um, in the context of what in Germany we call the Habilitation, mm -hmm. uh, this, the second book project, um, was a fascination with um, a certain diagnostic form of, of poetics or a diagnostic form of cultural critique um, in, in his early um, essay um, called The Serious Artist. Um, Pound talks about um, the art of diagnosis as 
uh, catering to or and also revealing what he calls the cult of uh, ugliness whereas he he um, he, differenti he differentiates between uh, that art of diagnosis on the one hand and um, 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 the art of cure um, the, 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 the um, the art of, of beauty on the other. So ugliness and beauty and diagnosis and cure. So it's really interesting and at some point he even says that satire um, has uh, uh, a sort of incision, a corporeal, um, a, a, a corporeal element to it that is almost um, um, that almost cuts into the fabric of the social. Mm. Um, very interesting. Now, um, we have interests we share, yes. maybe the interest in materiality, yeah. mediality, and maybe also intermediality, mm -hmm. remediation. In your talk, uh, you talked a bit about uh, two media, or one medium per poet, mm -hmm. really important. Uh, Pound, that was the radio. The radio, yes. The radio, and with Olsen, it was the typewriter, yeah. which is very closely linked to the body in a way. Mm -hmm. um, maybe um, we could talk about this a bit, about materiality, mediality, and also maybe intermediality. I mean, Pound mm -hmm. is somebody, you know, with high, his idea about ideograms, and uh, then the modernism is called the uh, age of uh, hieroglyphs. Right. Film, yeah. Right. Uh, maybe we could talk about this aspect a bit. Yes, for it sure. Comes in, how it is for sure. important. Both both uh, poets are really interested in various media and various uh, what has been called in literary studies um, intertextual references. Mm -hmm. And um, <coughs> one of the things that that interests me here in in in, in my uh, second book project is. The, um, the notion of influence and the, the notions of tradition. And through the lenses of intertextuality and intermediality, those two poets have been, have been um, analyzed and scrutinized uh, in, in various ways already. And media like the radio uh, for Pound and, and, and the typewriter in, in particular for Olsen are really important there. Um, and I, I'm, I'm I'm really interested here in, in adding another term that, um, that is not originally my own coinage, uh, certainly, but one that I take from uh, Christoph Kleinschmidt's uh, book Intermaterialität, about um, German Expressionism. And I think uh, the notion of uh, intermateriality might be an, an interesting addition to um, discourses on Pound and also in other poets in terms of intertextuality and intermediality to, to, to amplify or to emphasize uh, the notion of the material. Because both for, um, um, both for Pound and for Olsen, um, to think or to define materiality is always something that is, that is ethically and politically inscribed. Mm -hmm. Now, towards the end of your talk, and this is another topic that I briefly want to bring in, you talked about, you know, uh, how interested uh, Olsen was in the, like, locale, right. um, you know, um, right. yeah. And uh, you used the term ecological ethics mm -hmm. in connection with his poetry, and I wonder whether you would also like to use a term like ecological aesthetics. Would that mean something to you in connection to Olsen? It would, it would, mm -hmm. because his his um, his um, text in poetics, not not his, his actual poetry, but his poetics, his essays, his his, his prose um, uh, texts, texts are, are really invested in a certain form of um, aesthetic gesture, mm -hmm. and that aesthetic gesture is intimately linked with his. Um, his ideas about the environment and ecology and how processes of modernization sort of um, revolutionize, um, for better or worse, um, what it means to think about the environment and um, ecology. Um, so that is uh, something that, that, that is important for an understanding of, of, of Olsen's work. Um, but that is also something that, that um, links Pound to Olsen because both of them are invested in a certain form of organicism, mm -hmm. but one form of organicism, in Pound's case, would lead to um, to fascism, whereas for Olsen, 
um, uh, it leads to a certain uh, form of liberalism, um, and that is that is again linked um, to to his ethics and his aesthetics mm -hmm. for sure. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for those uh, questions. Well, it was a pleasure. Thank mm -hmm. you.